All right, YouTube, stick with me. This is about to get a little confusing. In my last jet ski update video, I was trying to remove weight from my flywheel, and I decided that I wanted to build a tool to try to balance my flywheel once I was done the work to it. In the process of doing that, I realized that my lathe chuck wasn't running quite true, and that was giving me issues with building the tool. I then made a video on how I repaired my chuck. Once I've verified that my chuck is now running true, I can then build a proof of concept tool to see if we can eventually build an actual tool to balance my flywheel. I did some work on my chuck yesterday and now I'm going to try to figure out if uh, it actually helped. So this is what I'm working with right now. Out at the end of the shaft, we're off by six thousandths. And as I move in closer to the chuck, about a thousandths there. Up against the chuck on this part, we are less than half a thou off just to check to see if the chuck is true and concentric and all that good stuff I gotta turn this down a little bit off one side but I think part of the problem now might be that this shaft is thin enough that with that much stick out I'm getting some flex so if I dial in a thou, I'm probably not really getting a thou cut. Well, guess what idea I just had? Been doing a bunch of grinding on my chuck, and it just dawned on me that I could grind this and that would eliminate at least some of the difficulty that I would have with flex issues. I've never done this before, I have no idea what is going to happen, so. <laughs> All right, so I've got it to true up, and I'm at 990 millimeters, or 9.9 .9 millimeters, which is 0 .390 inches. So it will still fit in my collet. half a foul. So. Now that I have it so that I can set it up in here, I'm going to now take the chuck off and put the MT4 to ER32 adapter in and then see if it will run true in the ER32 call it
Here's my MT4 to ER32. What is it called? MTB4 dash ER32 um, adapter. Alrighty. Slide it in there. We want to go in about that far. No need to go in too deep. No one ever said. One thou on that part. Now let's move it out here to 30. One thou, okay. That is acceptable. Okay, so the whole idea of making this piece was so that I could mount my flywheel. I'm going to put a dial indicator on here, and the shaft is now flexible because it's fairly thin here. So if the flywheel is not balanced properly, it will make the shaft flex and it will show by moving the needle on my dial indicator. Okay, so as a proof of concept, I've got it uh, basically figured out, I think. It's not terribly clear, but you can see it. So now, as a proof of concept, I'm going to put all of this weight to unbalance the flywheel. I'm going to mount it in one of the puller holes. This should make the needle move more which would prove that the shaft is flexing. It's not just run out in the shaft. And then we can use that information to figure out how to balance the flywheel properly. So it's pretty obvious that it's working. It's actually giving us the information that we want. I'm going to need to use a skinnier shaft in here and make it longer to make this practical because if we take all of this weight and I take this over to the scale, we can see I have 7.1 ounces, yeah, 7.1 ounces or 200 grams. So I'm getting about four thousandths on the dial extra with 200 grams. So that means 100 grams would only give me two thousandths. 50 grams would only give me a thou run out. And I need to be a lot closer than that. So what I need to do is make a shaft that will be more flexible. So in order to gain accuracy and to be able to make finer adjustments and balancing on the flywheel, I need to uh, I need to modify this. But the basic proof of concept is a success. Yeah, what I might do is cut this off, drill a hole, thread it, screw this in, and then while it's still in the lathe. Uh, turn down a bunch of this shaft so that it's perfectly concentric with this or maybe even grind it and then I'll have uh, quite a flexible shaft that is quite strong and plenty long. Deep do we need to go? Uh. All right. 
right, now I'm going to switch to a slightly bigger bit. Now that I have I've got it back to zero, let's go. You can hear it squeaking as it's coming out. That means it's dragging a little bit on one side. And that's why I want to use the end mill before I drill to my final diameter because uh, the end mill, unlike a drill bit, uh, won't just follow the path that's already there. It'll attempt to cut its own path. Should be enough now my hole is nice and concentric I got my 10 by 1.25 tap that seems to be working once I get it started in there a ways Once I get it started in there a fair ways, like there now, I uh, will use a tap wrench or something else because the drill chuck is not meant for holding hardened shafts. And it will just slip and all I'm going to achieve is damaging both my tap and my, uh, what do you call it, chuck. be really cool if this actually works. Sure would be nice to have a Tormach CNC machine and just push a button and have all this done. So basically, instead of trying to turn this, it would never work because by the time I get way out here, it's going to flex so much that I'm not going to be able to turn it. I'm going to leave this full length for now, bend it till I get it within a thou or a couple thou, and then I'll grind it and then I'll cut it off the length. I decided just to go right to the grinding. Well, the finish sure is nice. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's a, a very distinct difference between the part that I just ground and the part that I cut with the tool. So the finish turned out really nice. It's going to take quite a while. It actually is taking some material off though. So I guess this is what I'm doing for the next few hours. So basically I spent a whole bunch of time trying to grind this and I got it within a thousandth of an inch. The problem is is that when it's extended out this far, even grinding it makes it vibrate quite a lot. It was a thousandth thinner at this end than it was at this end just because it was vibrating Well, as you can see, as a proof of concept, this idea shows some promise. It doesn't offer nearly enough sensitivity, but hopefully our next version of this tool will get us there. We're going to keep trying, but remember, failure is always an option. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.